Good morning. Um, I just want to do a bit of a rundown on the batteries. Now, we've been here in Mildura now for nearly a week, um, four or five days, I think it is. And we haven't plugged into power and it has been freezing like this morning we got up at eight o'clock and it was three degrees. Um, Nick's complaining, so we've been putting the heater on before we go to bed for about half hour, 40 minutes sometimes an hour and again in the the morning for an hour or so just to try and take the chill off the floor it's like standing on an ice block um it has been overcast the last few days today's been really good uh well so far it's what 10 o'clock and the sun the sun's out hence why it was so cold this morning um we've also got our battery i've just plugged in so that we can try and get a little bit of power back into into the batteries. We're down to um, we got down to forty nine point five percent, so it's not too bad. Um, if we're tra traveling in the car, like you get down to eighty percent, you drive for about four hours and your batteries are back. But because we're parked under the tree, and Nick will just swing around and show you where we are. You can see they got the quite a big tree big tree that's overhanging and the sun actually comes from the sun comes across that way in front of that tree so it's blocking a fair bit of our solar out but up until the last two days where it's been overcast we were managing to top the batteries up every day but i just had to ask me mate can i plug and we've, you, we've used like in? sorry to cut you off but we've used the washing machine the coffee machine the aircon for heat so it's not like we've yeah. you know sort the of induction thought, cooktop's been going so yeah. we're Pizza not oven. Got, yeah, oh, no, that's, that's gas. on gas Do it. um it's not that we we are trying to skimp it was just sort of trying to give people an idea of how much our batteries do work like it's it's pl it's plenty i'd be concerned if it was like this and we've been driving down to 50 percent but if we were out in the bush and we were going to go and drive for the next camp, which was 200 k's away, our batteries would be fully charged by the time we got there. So, I'll uh, just show you up there. I don't know if you can actually see that. But we're down, we're down to that. Morning, guys. Nice and chilly this morning. It was three degrees. So we've come out this morning to Red Cliffs. Um, with our friends just out a bit of a um, market stalls. So the whole yeah, old country towns, the, the streets are so wide, a little narrow shots, but they go back a long way. Just moved out to the sun, it's freezing. And here's all these grapevines again down the middle of this road. Look at her. You can't get her to walk fast, but she's found a donut thing. You only want to buy two so you can eat mine. There you go. Sit in the sun. Mm. Take a bite. Someone just you just said you can see all the hairs on your chin. Worth it? Mm. Hot. Quite yummy. I won't read all this, but you can freeze the screen and then go from there. So this is big Lizzie. So the way these um, tracks work is, as that wheel rolls forward onto that one, they touch that that top bit up there will touch there like this one is.
cool. Mr. Frank Batrill, creator of Big Lizzie, was born in Sturt, South Australia in 1871. An avid student, Batrill studied four different trades, including that of engineering and draftsman. He also served an apprenticeship as a blacksmith and later gained a steam certificate at Broken Hill Mines. It was at Broken Hill that he perceived the need for a more humane mode of transport to replace the camel trains, which carried wool and other heavy loads in the sandy terrain. It was this perception which led to his invention of the dread nought wheel and subsequently the design and construction of Big Lizzie and her two trailers. So just a little bit of information there on it. And here, here's, here's its weights and stuff here. Yeah, I've got all that up on the other side. There it is there in full work. And so they obviously found it in 1971 in Glendenning and then they've brought it back and restored it to its former glory as you see it now. It's massive. Just stand next to it, Nick, so they can get an idea. Change states, um, three states was it, John? Yep. Three straight um, states fa fairly quickly around here. Can't oh, see. can't see, and that bloke was good. waiting around All in good. his turn. Itchy balls too. It's on the back of that caravan. Oh, I was going to say, how did you know? <laughs> it's your ball. just 10k's on from where we were and we're crossing over the Murray into New South Wales. Southern Ocean. So they had a flood here in 
the 50s, 1956 the last time. And um, as you know, they had that really, really bad flood recently. Just recently. It's obviously um, Darling River running down through here. And then the Murray runs from here. And then out, out into the Southern Ocean through thing. So if you we turn it around, sorry if it's really windy, but wind noise. So as you can see, the milky water coming down, down this side is the Darling. So that's the Darling running down up through to there. And then straight over, there's, um, that's the Murray flowing back down. So we're gonna do a little climb. There's a little staircase there we can get a better view. Okay, so we won't be climbing up there. It's all blocked off. Obviously some water damage from the flood. It is so cold here. Not very often you see me in long pants and jumper. There's, we're parked over there, but see where the toilets are behind my car. Um, in the flood, the recent flood just here, um, you, could, you could just see the roof of that toilet. So that's how much this water's come up. This is what they call a lock, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so obviously the water's higher on this side than it is on the other. So you, they'll bring the, the boats will come in and put into that piece into there, and then they'll fill it up or let it down, whichever way it is, and then open up the other end, just so they can control the flow of the water. This is now the Murray, isn't it? This is the Darling. This is the Darling. Murray and Darling, they join here. Yeah, oh, oh my God. Yeah, it is the Murray. So this is where the Murray comes down from what we showed you before, and that Darling comes into it. female prison, Wentworth. So we're just leaving Wentworth and we're, this is a one lane bridge so we're going to stop. Oh, oh, that's does. why the people are working on it. So once we cross this bridge we're over the Murray and back into Victoria. section we just run over then can be raised or lowered let the taller boats through and there it is Victoria Mildura 26 k's uh, so we're heading off tomorrow today we're just uh, emptying the toilet devil's esky uh, we're going to get some gas topped up. We've done our shopping yesterday and we're just going to do a quick little tour around and show you a few camp spots which look pretty special on the water there. Okay, we're just coming down here. Um, it's a free camp in Mildura on the Murray River. This is one of the pump stations we did. Some friends brought us down the other day just to have a look, but we didn't have the camera, so we'll just come back to have a bit of a film and that. But you can camp, camp on the on the um, right on the river's edge. All of this was underwater in those floods not so long ago. Welcome to King's Billabong Park. And it is on Wiki Camp, so you can look it up. 
get here, but it's definitely worth it. just down at um, a free camp just on right on the Murray River there um, we're just letting you know that we're heading off tomorrow we haven't done a lot of footage this um, trip through Mildura and um, we've got some friends that we've been hanging out with for a week um, so yeah we've just chilled out and um, caught up with them so we've just popped down here just to show you the beautiful camp area and we're heading off towards Hay tomorrow to a free camp yeah so I'll just, I'll just spin you around so you can have a look. This here is uh, the Murray River. So the side we're on is Victoria. And the other side you can see over there is New South Wales. Try not to fall over. But if you can see up there in the distance, that's the pumping station where we come in. It's free to camp here. As you can see, there's some people over there camped. Um, there's a few more just through here but it wanders it goes all the way through here free to camp but it is cold it is very cold it's here it's really cold <laughs> we're um, yeah <laughs> looking forward to heading towards Queensland and getting into a bit more oh. warmer weather but it is what it is it's a time of year that we come um, we did buy a computer to try and do our editing a little bit better so I've spent the last four days trying to sort that out where so bear with us because it's probably pretty shit still so. we've still got to remember to to, in, to start an intro and to say we're finished where we we're still um, learning we're still learning but we're trying to get better but you know we just need people to like and subscribe on YouTube cost you nothing um, but it helps us a lot uh, helps us to grow helps us grow and then once we get into a thousand then youtube sort of start thinking yep yeah, right oh we can um kick maybe in. kick these people into a bit of advertising all right so Cheers, we'll guys. catch you goodbye see you yeah, bye, bye.